what I really like to emphasize is it's really about being in the moment mm -hmm. and being present and learning a new skill and then just being proud of yourself at the end of the day. Richard Forte presents. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Forte presents episode number, I'm not sure but it's a special one. Today in the studio in Suite 16, I have an amazing artist, somebody who's come back to North Bay from being kind of all over the world, but especially in Toronto. Um, uh, not just a, a visual artist, but a shoemaker, a designer, officially a designer. Um, her name is Jennifer Allison. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Thanks Everybody, if you don't know Jennifer, now you do. I, uh, now, now you do, Jennifer. Thanks yes. for being here. Thanks for having me. And I've been wanting to connect for so long. So, so we're taking a second try at this little, um, our camera overheated, ladies and gentlemen. Darren fixed it though. Darren, thank you. I'm trying to bring Darren into all the shows because he's the one who actually makes the magic happen. Um, uh, so Jennifer, back to you, your journey. I would love to hear, for people who don't know who you are, because you moved back to North Bay March 2020. One week before the pandemic was announced. Before yeah. the, lo the first before lockdown. Before we knew it was a thing. Give us a little bit of your bio and who you are and what you're planning to do and are doing here. So many plans. So I'm a fashion and footwear designer, maker, educator, and artist. And I own the Art and Soul Academy. And the Art and Soul is a DIY space for design-driven dreamers. And essentially what that means, it's a DIY space. It will be an event space. Um, to offer workshops and events to get people creative and making things with their own two hands. So um, I have had the business for six years. I was operating in Toronto and then brought it back, like we were saying, March 2020 and haven't been able to officially open the doors, but looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel. So we should be opening soon and being able to offer group workshops and private classes and events. So art and soul spelt S-O-L-E. Exactly. So clever. And yes. I love your logo. Thank you. I love yeah. the design of it. Yeah, I think it really encapsulates what I try and emphasize. You know, there's really art in everything. So the art of shoemaking, the art of sewing, you know, um, everything is art can be an artistic practice. And it's uh, it's a really nice feeling to to be in the moment and work on something that you are proud of. So it's not necessarily always about the end result. You know, you do at the end of a workshop walk out with a pair of shoes or a bag or whatever the case may be. But what I really like to emphasize is it's really about being in the moment mm -hmm. and being present and learning a new skill and then just being proud of yourself at the end of the day. That's sounds good to me yeah it's so fun that's so fun so why shoes how did you get into shoes I mean you obviously loved shoes I did but not as much as one would think I loved fashion okay. so I was a dress designer and I had been sewing ever since I was really little um, took sewing classes throughout my childhood but then studied fashion design at Ryerson and what I liked to make was very grand I would say so the only way to be able to continue doing that would have been to get into bridal and I didn't mm. really want to get into bridal at the time um, so my first corporate job out of school was with Aldo and they hired me as a footwear illustrator so they just hired me to simply sketch out designs and then I was kind of right place right time so they were going through internal changes where at first they just did product development but then they were building an in-house design department so I was one of their first designers ever hired. And then it was kind of, all right, I guess I'm a footwear designer from there <laughs> and learned right on the job. Yeah, and before we started yeah. rolling the cameras, you were telling me that you seem to have like a two, three year cycle. You know, you go full into something and then you need to take a step back and recalibrate. Yes. So I'm... tell me a little bit about your creative process and, and like how it's played out for you. Yeah, I would say I'm an all or nothing person. Like I get hyper focused on a task and that's all I can think about. That's all I want to focus on. Like I just get in the zone and then I put so much into it that I need to recover. And my recovery has always been travel. So mm -hmm. I've always stepped outside of my world to then come back and be able to regroup. 
Um, so that's been kind of interesting with COVID not being able to step outside, but I've really kind of stepped inside this time and really kind of for, I think for the first time ever, really kind of discovered who I am. And I think as hard as this time has been, it's been the first time I've felt the most comfortable in my own skin, oddly Those enough. Those are amazing statements. Yeah. So who are you? What did you discover? Like, what are the things, I know who are you is a bit of a funny question, a but one, what it? I'm trying to get at is what in your perception of yourself have you noticed in terms of maybe your priorities, have you noticed have changed over yeah. time? Because if, because I'm a traveler too, I so relate to your story. After I did research yeah. on you, I was just like, who is this person? Because we have a lot of parallels. I love but it. I've also had the luxury and privilege of traveling and getting perspective on, on uh, where I am, you know, in the world. Yep. And it's been hugely impactful in my life. And um, yeah, but then, you know, when we change, we have to then come back and, and like you said, reintegrate mm -hmm. into where we are and find a way forward, uh, especially if we're creatives and we are trying to earn money from our creative, yeah. uh, you know, the creative side of, of what we're doing. Yeah, I think my biggest revelation is that there really needs to be a strong purpose to whatever my mission is at the time. I think that was always the problem in my design experience. Don't get, don't get me wrong, I love fashion, I always will, I love art, I love beautiful things, but I, I really appreciate the craftsmanship and almost the story behind the scenes. There's nothing cooler or more interesting to me to step into someone's studio. I like to see how the artist thinks and what their reason is for it. Like for me, art and design is meditation and it's, it's, um, it's kind of confidence boosting, right? It's, it really is my medicine and it's, gotten me through so many difficult times. It's something I've always had and have grabbed onto during difficult times. So I think in the fashion industry, it's more business and numbers focused. So I was designing and creating knockoffs for certain brands because as a fast fashion company, I worked for several. We were just really quick watching the runways and trying to come up with the next best design. And for me, that's not rewarding because you kind of get sucked up into the kind of what's the point. Um, so what I'm doing now, that was kind of the motivation. I, I really did some soul searching, I guess it was six years ago, um, about starting a business. And Art and Soul is kind of to bring people together and to share that passion and kind of promote slow fashion over fast fashion and have the stories behind the products and why are we doing this? Why are we drawn to this? And I think I just really need a sense of purpose to get behind something or to be motivated. Otherwise, I feel really stifled. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so let's direct people to those different social media accounts you do have because they, they're all doing a little bit different things, yeah. but they're all clearly you and interconnected. So what are the, the where are the places if somebody's curious to follow you and and uh, go tune in to the behind the scenes because I agree with you. There's so much value in seeing how somebody gets so to that final destination, not just like, look at my perfect thing. Yeah, exactly. You want to know that almost the backstory, the struggle. You don't want to see someone just kind of, you know, do something really fabulous and easy because it never is the case, right? There's always multiple tries. Um, so Art and Soul, it's www.artandsoulacademy.com and Art and Soul Academy on Instagram and Facebook. And then throughout COVID, I just rediscovered my own art practice. Um, so I always identified as an artist, but I had never practiced. I wasn't practicing. I wasn't doing the day-to-day -day, um, things you the need process. to do yeah. to call yourself an artist. There was no execution. Um, so I really got back into drawing and painting, and you can see all of that stuff on Jennifer Allison Art or Jennifer Allison Illustration on Instagram. Yeah, and they are beautiful. Hey. They're beautiful showcases for your talent. Um, what an interesting fallout of such a hard time that you actually got to practice what it is that you want to be doing and, and teaching and Yeah, growing. I think there's so many things we can all complain about right now. Like I, the list is long. Yeah. So I was just cr trying to flip that and think about how can I make this season work for me? you know, what are, what is the good? And the good was, okay, it might be financially tough, but I have a ton of time. And I've always been reactive. I've said this before. I've been reactive with my business. 
So this is the first time probably ever that I can be proactive and really think about what I want to, essentially I'm opening a new business. When you move your business from one city to yeah. another, it's new to the majority of people in that city. It's a new market. And it's a new market, new atmosphere. So yeah, um, yeah it's been a ton of thinking, a ton of you know behind the scenes stuff, but I'm a person who really associates output with my value as like mm. an individual, which has been a hard thing to get around. So I'm not necessarily putting out a lot of stuff for Art and Soul at the moment, but there's been a lot of behind the scenes work. So all of my in-person content that I was teaching on the regular is gonna be digital and then will be assembled into a kit. So instead of a full-time school now, I'm gonna be more of an event space and pop-up workshops and um, just have a really awesome variety for all skill levels and all ages too. That's important for me. All skill levels, all ages, more online, although mm -hmm. you're going to have some in-person things. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I was interested in that you seem to be developing is this idea that people would come for these workshops, stay here for a while, unplug, yeah. because it is a slower lifestyle here. Yeah. It's a it's a great thing. It can be a challenge as well. You know, if if you want uh, the downtown life, you're probably not going to like totally thrive downtown right. North Bay. <laughs> Uh, not the, you know, the, I'm meaning like the big city yes, skyscraper yes, yeah. life. Yeah. The downtown yeah. North Bay life is great. It's and great, I love yeah. downtown North Bay and want to support everything you're doing. And I see totally. you're setting up on the main main street. Yeah. Right? So I'm actually on Algonquin, 315 oh, Algonquin, Algonquin right. Avenue. And I have a beautiful storefront. So in Toronto, I had a commercial loft space and wasn't street level. So um, I'm so excited to open the doors because I've never had storefront access with windows. Um, so it's just a special place. It feels like home. It's, it's more space than what I had before. Yeah. So I'm really excited to invite, like my clients have come in the past from all over the world um, to come learn. So what I do is really unique and it's the only full-time shoemaking school in Canada. Um, so people from Europe and all over the US and, and throughout Canada have come to take my class and I thought that would be a really neat aspect you know I was at first worried about moving up north and I said you know they're already traveling so far what's mm -hmm. another few hours to come to North Bay and to truly like you said unplug yeah. and uh, North Bay has so much to offer so I what I can do is package up day programming and then link them with the other businesses, breweries, bakeries, restaurants, shops, and really put a beautiful itinerary you curate, together you and curate, curate an this experience. experience. Yes. So I'm it. so excited. It's going to be Darren. so good. You see, it's gonna be so good. You see, Darren, why <laughs> I was getting all excited. Yeah, because collaboration is key, right? Like, you know, there's a lot of people, you get stuck in a rut. You, I feel like North Bay can be a city that's point A to point B. You get in your car and you miss a lot of stuff if you're not walking or biking. Um, so I just like, I'm so passionate about promoting. If I see something cool. neat, I want people to know about it. Yeah. I want my clients to have a good experience and I want them to come back and, and also just, yeah, be able to rest up and all the good stuff. That's cool. And you're obviously not afraid to roll up your sleeves and get involved because you're sitting on the board as a director of creative industries. Yes. Well, funny story. So knowing that creative industries existed really gave me the confidence that there was a group of creatives fighting for other creatives. So that was kind of, you know, okay, people are doing some interesting things. I'm going to move back, give it a go. And then because, you know, it gave me such a positive um, confirmation, I thought I'd get involved too. And I was uh, fortunate that they were hiring new board members. So I'm really looking forward to, yeah, just being an advocate for creativity in the city. Awesome. Well, I think fresh eyes really bring a good perspective to town because uh, it's that perspective often that lets us see those diamonds in the rough, so to speak. Tell me a little bit about your travels. You have traveled quite a bit. Yeah, so I was fortunate to travel a lot with work. I, that was mostly in Asia. Um, with, Asia with, is a big, big part. Like yeah, where, so where? I would mostly go directly to China. We'd fly into Hong Kong and then we'd drive into this city called Dongguan. And that's, it's Talk about perspective. Yeah, it's nicknamed Shoe Town because wow. everyone from all over the world who's in the footwear industry would go to this small factory town. And um, generally you're just paired up with the factory and and you're there working 15 hour days in the factory and you get to do a little bit of sightseeing and you tend to have one day off yeah. um, on those trips. But 
um, yeah, those were really incredible because I mean, talk about, yeah, like you said, perspective and, and just, there's always a lot of concerns with factory conditions and it was interesting. I really wanted to see all that for myself. You know, fast fashion does have a back, a bad rep, but what I realized it's actually the company's responsibility to set the standards because the factories can accommodate any set of, hmm. of requests. So if you request a really cheap price point, they can do what it takes to make that happen. So if you're being fair on your end, then that elevates the factory on their end. So um, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, but also, you realize the relationship. Yeah, it's the, not all one way. It's not all one way. And it's more like we, as a brand, you have a lot of control and it's your responsibility to recognize where you can do better and um, and you need, we all can do better, right? Sure, well at the, at the end of the day, look at you, you're doing uh, locally made shoes. I mean, really, there isn't anybody <laughs> else making shoes in North Bay. Vic's yeah. Shoe Repairs fixes shoes. Yeah, they're very wonderful well. He's to- got to, a great reputation. Yeah, <laughs> oh, wonderful to expand the lifespan. Yeah, right. oh, exactly. But what you're doing, I, I've not seen anything like that. Yeah, it's, it's very different for sure. But if you think about it, we all wear shoes. And there, it's a massive market and it's a product that I think people don't really or can't really imagine how it is made because it's more of a sculpture, mm -hmm. a t-shirt or a dress you can kind of visualize. You've seen movies, you've seen some, maybe someone in your family assemble a piece of cloth, but shoes, there's a lot of components. You kind of need woodworking and all these power tools and um, sewing and a ton of glue and uh, it's, yeah, I, when people walk in, there, no one really has what you need necessarily in their resume to yeah. make a pair, but we, we learn on the spot. And in, in a way, I like that better. Someone coming in fresh, because yeah, cool. then they just kind of follow the directions. And, and when you take it one step at a time, it's really not that daunting. Well, I am so inspired by what you're doing. I think it's awesome. It's awesome for our town. And I'm really, really um, happy to see that you're that you are getting involved and that you want to bring your energy um, to what we're doing here because there is a lot of potential but I always say we're the ones that are going to do it yeah like you know this next generation of entrepreneurs and makers and shakers as you call them like, <laughs> <laughs> these makers and shakers we have to figure out how to collaborate yeah. and that's the new way and we have a great opportunity right now because of the pandemic shifting everything that we have to build new yeah. You know, we have to think of things in a fresh way. Now more than ever, right? I think people are open to different ways of planning or services. You know, they, there's, I think there's no expectation. We can only go up. And I think if you're a business person or an artist, that's the best position to be because the door is open. There's no expectations. We can just go up. <laughs> we can just go up. You can only go up from here. You can only go up. From, there's no better way to end a show on that note. <laughs> Then we can just go up from here. Yeah, Thank you really so much for so. coming in, taking a bit of time to explain what you're doing. How do people um, support what you're doing right now? What's the best way to um, get involved, learn, support? I know you sent us to the website, so we can put that up again. Yeah. But is there something that you're promoting actively right now that you're trying to get sort of going? So the kits, the shoemaking and product kits that I'm oh, putting together. Oh, you have together. mask kits Mask too. kits, yep, all that good stuff. Yep. Um, all that, well, the masks are available, but um, the shoemaking kits will be available soon. Um, so I would just say keep tabs on social media awesome. and that's where I'm the most vocal and make all the announcements. And then you can always go on the website too to, to see what's, what's available. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for doing that and keep doing it. Thank good you. luck. I really wish you good luck. And if there's anything we could do to help you, don't be shy. Thank you. I appreciate this platform. This was a great chat. Yay. Yay. Jennifer Allison, ladies and gentlemen. She's got stuff going on. You're going to want to follow that. So go find her. Okay. Thanks again for checking in. And I want you to please subscribe. Darren, he's, Darren's looking at me saying, tell him to subscribe. If you subscribe, I like totally appreciate it. And go find Jennifer too and subscribe to her stuff because... Um, Lots coming, as you can tell. Jennifer, ciao for now.